Welcome to the Grids and Modularity Part 2 Assignment Tutorial for the Art 159 Graphic Design Layout Course. Here you'll find the assignment sheet for Part 2 for the Grids and Modularity Project. This time you're going to be working with text in placeholder boxes that will substitute as images to play with a variety of compositions, utilizing the same grid that we used in Part 1, but this time using it a little bit differently within the aspect of modularity. You can see previous examples here of how this is done in the past. One thing to keep in mind here within the 10 different compositions is to not be afraid of white space within the design and to try to consider the different compositions and how they might be used within context. Potentially it might be something like a newsletter or potentially a magazine uh, spread that you're working on or maybe a table of contents page that you might be working on something that might highlight a smaller image and a larger image, so on and so forth. So think about within the modularity in the grid, how you can come up with a variety of different ways of utilizing the composition here. Moving on into the template, let's go ahead and download the template for part two and open this up in InDesign so that we can take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in InDesign. And just like we've done in the past, we can see that we have our 10 different pages. I am in the uh, workspace of the Essentials workspace here. Reset that just so we're all in the same place. You'll see that we, if we come over to the Pages panel, I have 10 different pages. And you'll also notice that you should be able to see your guides within this space here as well. If for any reason you're not able to see your guides, make sure that in the Properties panel, the uh, guides is toggled on here underneath the guide section. The one over here on the left is toggled on so you can see these blue lines within the space. These are the guidelines that you're going to use for the actual grid. The black stroked uh, frame here is acting as the exterior of the page itself. So you're going to keep yours contained within the grid. So first thing we want to do, just like we've done in the past projects, is come up to our pages and change your name in your master page. Again, I'm gonna double click on the thumbnail for the master page. Using my type tool on the left-hand side, I'm going to click in and change the first and last name so that that will correspond on all of my working pages. Once I've made that change, I can double click into my page one of my working document and I can see that all of my pages now have my name changed. So you're gonna be using two different tools here. You're going to be using the type tool and you're going to be using the um, rectangular frame tool. So let's start with the rectangular frame tool. This is going to be the tool with the square and the cross through it. And what we want to do here is change the fill to this to be 80% black. So if I double click on the fill here, you'll notice that in my CMYK value, the one down here, I have 0, 0, 0, and 80. This is letting me know that the K, which stands for black, is set to 80%. So if yours says something different, if you have any other color here, just go ahead and click into those and click in the 0, 0, 0, and 80%. Hit OK. Once you have changed that to gray, now we're going to start to pull into the space here and utilize the grid to create different compositions. So you'll notice that again, I have multiple guidelines here within the space. This exterior line here is acting as the page itself. So I do not want to have any elements that go that far up to the edge of that page. Rather, you want to keep everything within these margins here of these nine different squares. Now within these nine different squares, you can use a single module of that square, clicking into that, or two different modules of that square by clicking and dragging through two. You can uh, expand that to four different modules or six different modules. The main thing is that you are using the actual modules and not stopping within the gutters. So within this space here, just as we've seen within part one, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different squares. Each one of these squares is indicated by the three columns that are moving vertically and the three rows that are moving horizontally. These gutters, these spaces in between those columns and those rows are intended to be left empty 
unless your image or your text is running all the way through that gutter and into the next module. So for example, if I wanted to create a large image up at the top of this page, I would click and hold to drag through all three of the modules within this row and release my mouse. Coming back over to the uh, fill over in the left hand corner or the fill in the appearance here, you'll notice that I've actually already set up a gray image box swatch for you. So with that frame tool that you have created the frame with, you can select into the fill here of the appearance and select on this gray image box, which should be at 80% black. Now I can come back to my selection tool and click out of that. This is going to act as my image for my first composition. Now I want to create a text box for this as well. Coming over to my type tool, I am going to do the same thing by clicking and dragging. I'm going to create, drag this through four different modules. And you'll notice that it's not showing me the exterior of this frame box, but I can see my cursor blinking here. And I can actually start typing in information here as well. Now, I don't expect you guys to type anything out. In fact, we're going to use what's called placeholder text to fill this box with text that does not make any sense, but it is simply Latin words that are put together in a nonsensical sense to give you the idea of what this will look like when it is filled with text, hence the word placeholder text. Now to enter in the placeholder text with the type tool and my cursor going here, I can right click into that box and you'll notice about halfway down it says fill with placeholder text. I'm going to go ahead and select that and it's going to go ahead and fill this entire text box with this placeholder text of Latin words. Again, they do not mean anything or they do not read in a sensible sense, but it gives me the idea of what this will look like with text. Now for this assignment, you are uh, instructed to use uh, fully justified text. Now what that means is right now within my text formatting, the default of this is to align my text to the left. And you'll notice that all of my text is aligned to the left of this text box. But on the right hand side, it's what we refer to as rag right or ragged right. It is not perfectly aligned. It's just as far as that particular sentence goes before it moves on to the next line. So we want to change that. We are going to click into our selection tool, our black selection tool, and select on our actual text box over here. And you'll notice within my properties tab, if I scroll down a little bit, I have these different paragraph options. Currently, it's aligned to the left. We also have aligned center and aligned to the right. Next to those, we have justified options. And these are what I want you to use for this assignment. I would use the justify with last line aligned left which will justify all of your text except for the last line and align that to the left. The reason we are using this justified text is because when I click out of this and go down to my different views, which is in the bottom of my tools here, you'll notice that the normal view allows me to see what I am working on. If I click into this, click and hold, I can go into preview and see what this is going to look like without those guides visible. And since we are using the justified text, I get a really uh, clear idea as far as what that text box width is and how it sits within the grid. And that is why we are using that justified text. Now I'm going to come back down here and go into my normal view again. And now I'm going to move down to page two, and create a different style. So again, coming back over to my text frame box, maybe this time I want to create a longer image that's going to span vertically. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the fill and go to create image box. And maybe I want to create a smaller image down below here as well, which might be some sort of footer to my content. Now, here is where we can break up the text as well. We can do things where you can utilize a single column of text to fill this column here. Again, I would right click and go to fill with placeholder text and then maybe use just this single module over here to fill this space as well. Right click, fill with placeholder text. Using my black selection tool, I can click on my first text box and use the justified setting. Go to my second text box and use my justified setting as well. Now you'll, no you'll again notice that I am leaving some white space. I am not filling up every single one of these modules within the composition. 
Uh, it doesn't mean that you couldn't necessarily do that, and maybe in some you would. So for example, if you wanted to fill this entire box here with placeholder text, you could certainly do that. It's not to say that you have to leave every composition with blank space, but I would suggest using maybe half of the compositions that do leave some white space within the composition or the layout itself. Now again, remember, these gutters are intended to break up the content. So if this image went through these modules into the next gutter right up to that text, that is going to lose points on this assignment. The only reason that this image should go into this gutter is if it is going all the way through that gutter and into the next set of modules here. Potentially this text would not be there then, right? This would be acceptable. But the reason that we don't want to run into the gutters is because if we have two text boxes and one of those runs all the way into the gutter, how are we supposed to separate the content between those? And now we have one text box that's a different size than the other one. So again, I'll go up to edit and undo. And now I can see that there is a clear separation, which allows me to see the separation in images and the separation in text. Now you'll go through and complete the rest of these uh, additional pages. In total, you'll have 10 compositions. Again, try to think of different contexts and ways that you would use this, whether it's a magazine, so on and so forth. And the last little bit that I'll leave you with is make sure to use the entire module. We're not using simply half of the module or a quarter of the module. The images and the text boxes that you're using, using should be either one full module or span into the additional modules that are needed as well. Okay, So make sure that you are using those full modules and that you are avoiding the gutters unless it is running into the next module. Just like we did in part one, you will save this out as a InDesign file so that you can continue to work on it. And then you will go up to File. Adobe PDF presets, smallest file size, and go ahead and save this out as a PDF file as well with the Adobe PDF preset. You do not need to touch the dialog box here. You will simply go to export and then upload that PDF to the assignment section in Canvas. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and good luck.